Okay, so the, uh, the, the first time I really began reading the Bible was, this might sound scandalous, I don't mean to scandalize anybody, when I really started reading the Bible for the first time was when I went to the seminary. Um, you'd think I would have read it before that, but that's when I really started getting into it. Because like most Catholics, you know, I had my conversion, well, I had my personal conversion my junior year of high school, and so that's when I really started going to Mass faithfully and daily Mass, and, and that's, that was the context in which I heard the scriptures, right? And I think that's how most Catholics are. At least that's how most Catholics have been, that we hear the Bible proclaimed to us. Um, I had gotten really into that first year in the seminary, I'd gotten really into apologetics, um, defending the faith, you know, all of those things. I had some Protestant friends who, they were really flummoxed that I, I ended up in the seminary and they couldn't understand it. And they were doing everything they could to get me out of the seminary because they thought I was making a big, big mix mistake. So they were constantly challenging me with this thing. And what about this verse? And I can't believe you believe this. And, and so it got me really into apologetics and defending the faith. And, and one of the books I bought at the time was this book called 95 Verses. I don't remember who it was written by, but it, the whole concept, it's a sort of takeoff of Martin Luther's 95 theses that he nailed to the Church of Wittenberg, his, his 95 complaints. Anyway, 95 verses was, it was a sort of, um, yeah, 95 different verses in the scriptures that refute Protestantism. And man, I took out my Bible, I read that book, and I was underlining and highlighting and making margin notations, and I had little tabbies on the side of this Bible, and this Bible was ready for warfare, right? I'm telling you, I was ready to go to battle with my Protestant buddies. Uh, the problem was about halfway through this project, I realized um, I, I was using a Protestant Bible on accident. Uh, um, I was, looking for, I was looking for like second Maccabees. I'm like, where's Maccabees? How come I don't have Maccabees in this Bible? Oh man, I was really new at that. So anyway, so here's the deal, right? I, I've noticed, I've noticed uh, that there are seasons in my life, in particular probably the past two years especially, there's, no, there's seasons that I've noticed that my attention is driven or is drawn to listen to sort of cultural commentators, podcasters, political commentators, that like I'm, I'm giving so much more space and time in my mind to these voices than to the scriptures, to the scriptures. I bring this up because of what we heard in the gospel today, that Jesus strides into the synagogue and we hear the response that the folks realize, for he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes. There are so many scribes, if you will, that I turn to, that we turn to, to listen to, to, to orient us in our struggles, in our confusion, in our daily life, right? There's so many scribes we turn to, but ultimately, they're just talking heads and they don't have authority. They don't have authority. They don't have authority, ultimate authority in my heart, in my life, in my mind. Only Jesus has that. We have to come to learn to love his word, right? It was uh, St. Jerome who said, ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. Ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. We have to learn to love his word and soak in his word. We have to spend time in the word to know the Father's voice. You can recognize the Father's voice, right? Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice and they know me, right? They know me. You can recognize that voice in your heart far more readily if you're, if you're routinely spending time listening to, meditating on, chewing on his word. You begin to know intuitively, like as that voice, as that thought bubbles up in your heart, like, oh no, that's definitely not, that's not what my father sounds like. That might be the same words that my father might say to me, but that's not the tone a voice that my father speaks to me with. My father doesn't make me feel condemned. My father doesn't make me feel accused. My father doesn't make me feel ashamed. My father's voice doesn't make me feel isolated. It is, his voice doesn't make me feel um, like I need to hide. That's not my father's voice. This is so important because so often the enemy can, the enemy quotes scripture right? We see that in the gospel. He quotes scripture to Jesus. The enemy knows scripture, but it's the tone. There's a, there's, a, there's a tone of voice 
with which the Father speaks. And you begin to pick up the tone the more you spend time in the Word. One of our, so our, our former youth minister, Taylor Gosiaco, who worked here as our youth minister for 10 years, he said this one time in passing, and I thought it was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. He said, you can tell a lot about a person by looking at their Bible. A person whose Bible is falling apart probably has a life that isn't. Isn't that great? So I took my Bible and I started beating it up really good, just like, ah, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But I think it's just a good invitation for all of us, right? Jesus, he speaks with authority unlike the scribes. And there's so many scribes right now that are trying to, at least in my own heart and mind, that are trying to, to claim the authority. Only he's got the authority. Him alone. So let's uh, maybe recommit in this new year to, uh, I know a lot of us probably did the Bible in a year. Um, podcast with Father Mike Schmitz. Why not do it again? Just start from day one again. Um, Let's recommit to soaking in the word to recognize the Father's voice. Amen.